Hey guys, it's Colleen, and I ate a whole package of cherries by myself. <laughs> anyway, today we are playing Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. This is a lot of people's favorites. It's definitely, definitely in my top four, I would say. I have a hard time arranging my top four, but it's definitely in my top four. Um, I'm so excited for this one, so let's get started. Welcome to my latest case. Dear Hannah, here I am at the railroad station along with a handful of other detectives about to board a train bound for who knows where. The only person who knows where we're going is Lori Gerard. That's the young woman who invited everyone. Actually, she didn't really invite me. She invited Frank and Joe Hardy, and they invited me. And I've always wanted to join forces with the Hardy Boys. I this is the first game with the Hardy Boys. Lori's silly attempts to grab publicity. Some people can be a little too rich and a little too famous. She reminds me of a younger Paris Hilton. Wish me luck. Love, Nancy. Well, people, now that our little orientation tour is over, let's get started. Okay, I, again, am Lori Gerard, and the first thing I want to do is thank you all for coming. John Gray, I am so thrilled that you're taking time out from that TV show of yours to do some ghost hunting here with us. I mean, Ghost Chasers is like the best cable show ever. And Charlena Purcell. I cannot tell you how much I adore those romance novels you write. Your characters just seem so real. And all that stuff you know about the Old West, you are just awesome. Huh? And Tino Balducci, only oh the most God. famous Tino police Balducci. detective in the country. And then there's Frank and Joe Hardy. They're amateur detectives. My dad and their dad are old friends. And you must be the other amateur detective, their friend, Natalie? Nancy. Nancy Drew? Whatever. All right. I'll bet you're wondering oh where we're going. Well, we're going to Copper Gorge, Colorado. Why? To solve the mystery of what happened to Jake Hurley, the man who originally owned this train. Because, see, one day in 1903, his train, this train, was found in a place called Blue Moon Canyon, which was out in the middle of the Nevada desert. Only the engineer was on board, and he was dead. As for Jake Hurley, he had disappeared from the face of the earth. Oh, and two more things. Before he disappeared, Jake was rumored to have found the richest gold mine in the world. And the train he owned, this train, his wife Camille died on it while they were going to the gold fields. It was rumored to be haunted. What in the world? What the hey, what's going on? Ah. People should never go tampering with things they don't understand. Oh, brother. <laughs> it's okay. Everybody just stay calm. No need to panic. I'll get to the bottom of this. Mm -hmm. Well, Nancy, you're up on all that social etiquette stuff. What are you supposed to do when your hostess vanishes into thin air? That's a good beginning to a game, I think. It's I so intriguing. It's because I'm not. Lori Gerard is a young woman whose only yeah. goal in life is to be famous. She craves attention and habitually uses her father's considerable wealth to get it. Huh. So you think her disappearing like that is just some kind of publicity stunt? I just think she couldn't resist showing off in front of all of us minds. Even if it is, I don't think that should be your first assumption. I think that That's you true. need to... You and I have actually met. Sort of. Assume that they are in danger. <laughs> you gave me some information about Dirk Valentine. Ah, Nancy Drew. You remember me? No. <laughs> what, what else do you know about Jake Hurley? Psst. Nancy. Come here. Uh, excuse me for a second. Hmm. What's that? Hey, Nance. Where have you two been? I followed Tino Balducci. And I went after John Gray. He went straight to the room in the car that used to be Camille's and didn't come out again. I could hear all these weird noises coming from inside. Any idea what he was doing? I was just about to go in, but the next thing I know, Joe's got my arm in a vice grip and is dragging me back here, babbling about how Balducci's our guy. He found mm -hmm. something on the floor right where Lori was standing when the train went dark. I saw him pick it up and put it in his pocket. Then he left. Did you ask him about it? 
When I tried to talk to him, he just kind of brushed me aside and said something snotty like, I'm on the job here, Junior, so just go back to the playground and stay out of the way. In case you two hadn't noticed, we're not getting a lot of respect around here. Can't we at least tell Balducci that we do stuff for ATAC? You know the rules. ATAC? American teens against crime. We do a lot of <laughs> undercover work for them. Wonder Cops probably never even been undercover. Are they so, 18 as well, I guess? What'd Charlena have to say? She thinks Lori is faking this whole disappearance thing. She's not the only one. How can you say that? You heard Lori scream. Anybody can scream, Joe. Especially girls whose fathers have given them... Why are people assuming that she's faking wanted. it? Like, you me? should assume what they are in danger think? first until you prove that they are faking it. That's the safest course to go, in my opinion. Um, I kind of agree with you. You've got to be kidding. Do you think maybe one of Lori's other guests is in on her disappearance? It's certainly possible. From the way she talked, it didn't sound like she knew any of them. Maybe that's what she wanted us to think. Or maybe that's what one of them wanted her to think. Well, whether Lori disappeared by force or by choice, what we've got to do now is find her. Absolutely. Has anyone talked to the engineer? Not that I know of. Then I'm going to head up front and tell him what's happened. Maybe he knows something we don't. Good idea. In the meantime, we'll take another look around in here. Great. Catch you later. As they just proceed to sit. <laughs> okay. Engineer, what do you want? Hello, I'm one of the passengers, and I just thought you should know that Lori Gerard has disappeared. So? Did you know she was going to disappear? Hey, all I know is I take orders from Miss Gerard, okay? Right now, my orders are to get this train to Copper Gorge nonstop. And until what if Gerard she's not on the train part, anymore? But yeah. not even be on the train anymore. Look, Miss Gerard may not be a rocket scientist or anything, but even she knows better than to jump off a movie. What if somebody train. threw her off? Excuse me, I got me a train to run. Oh, he knows something. He knows something. A square and a duck. It looks like this thing opens up. But how? I mean, there's gotta be a reason that she's a. Uh, Saying that out loud. Hmm. Looks like some sort of steam valve. Uh oh, that doesn't look good. Let's kill everyone. Oh, shoot. Oops. <laughs> That's all you have to say. Oops. I love killing her. Oh, that doesn't look good. It's one of my favorite things in these games. <gasps> oh, I should probably play, um, oh, it's called Blackmore Manor soon because it's got one of my favorite deaths. Okay. It looks like there's something behind this painting, but I can't seem to move it. Sadie Crawford. Dance on two left feet. Oh, okay. I guess there's something on that bookshelf. Yes? What are you working on? I'm writing my next book. I'm on a deadline, so until I write those two most wonderful of all three-letter words, the end. Everywhere I go, my laptop goes, and every chance I get, I write. Um... What else do you know about Jake Hurley? She's yeah, really good at, at uh, digging up Western history, history, right? Imaginative, adventurous, stubborn, egocentric, and most importantly, he was smitten at the age of 35 by a young French woman named Camille Boulet who died about a year after they were married. Oh, Jesus. How did she die? Oh, I guess we can't ask that. East Coast. Philadelphia, I think. His parents were British aristocrats. Sometime in the 1870s, he decided to seek his fortune out west, so he had this train custom-built so that he, and some years later his wife, could traverse the mountains and plains in relative comfort. How would you feel about living on a train and constantly traveling? 
I mean, that is a lie for some people. And I do think a train would be better than one of those camper things. Hmm. I don't know, maybe. Where did he meet Camille? I don't know that. The circumstances surrounding her passing are a bit of a mystery uh, too. All anyone knows for sure is that years after Camille's death, he showed up in Denver with a pouch full of gold nuggets and semi-precious stones, which he used to purchase mining supplies. He refused to huh. say how he'd come by them, which of course led to speculation that he had found a fantastically rich vein somewhere. Although to this day, its existence remains unsubstantiated and its location quite unknown. Huh. Why do you think Lori invited you on this trip? Well, no she can dig up history. I'm authority on life in the Old West. Yeah. And because I'm so good at using old information to unearth new information. You know this, Nancy. You learned this in Shadow Ranch. Well, it's a gift. I'll cool. let you get back to your writing. That would be nice. She looks frumpier than I would have imagined. Is that rude to say? It's probably rude to say. like some kind of gemstone mm -hmm. this must have been the sleeping car I need four numbers to unlock this and there's yes. what 10,000 possible combinations <sighs> uh, guessing could take me a while hmm yeah I guess that would oh wait what's this a tale of two dolls Ill-tempered Edna could not get her way. She couldn't get Alice to come out and play. I can't. I'm too tired, is what Alice said. I just want to go straight back to bed. Edna angrily tried to make herself heard. But all that came out was one two-part word. Why, I'm not your mother, yawning Alice replied. Till Edna the Terrible finally gave up and cried. That's sad. She just wanted to play with her friend. But her friend was tired, so you should respect that. Hi, you're that Nancy person. How you doing? John Gray. It's a pleasure to meet you. I've seen your TV show. Then I don't have to explain what I'm doing. Oh, heck no. Why, you're measuring the who's he what's -is with your trusty gizmometrometer thing. Right now I'm taking time-lapse electromagnetic readings and recording background noise. This was Camille's private car. If she had something to do with Lori's disappearance, analyzing these readings may give me a clue as to Lori's whereabouts. I thought, like, his Ghost Hunter show would have been, you know, fake and put on for the show. Does he really believe that he can hunt down ghosts? I thought it was all for the show. Are you saying that Camille's ghost kidnapped Lori? What to most people are ghosts are actually temporary distortions and local electromagnetic fields caused by the presence of residual psychic energy generated by the person or persons who frequented that particular locale. And that's my working theory, at least. That's a little hard to swallow. It's yeah. all very scientific, but the fact is, Lori's missing, and I for one am doing everything in my power to find her. The vibes I'm getting make me think she could be in serious trouble. You don't think Tino Balducci will be able to track her down? I doubt it. In fact, I kind of feel sorry for the guy. After catching those bank robbers, he can't just be a good cop anymore. He's got to be a great cop. Tough to perform under that kind of pressure. That reminds me of J.K. Rowling. I heard that she had to start writing under nom de plume because anything that she puts out after Harry Potter is not nearly going to get to that level, you know? And she has high expectations because she, you know, made a generational cult following. <laughs> What's your opinion of Charlena Purcell? Charlena Purcell writes romance novels. End of comment. 
Well, that's rude. Even if you don't like romance novels, doesn't mean you need to shit on her career. Apparently, she's doing well because people like it. Is Lori a friend of yours? First time I met her was when I boarded this train with all the rest of you. I knew her by reputation, of course. Like everyone else who reads the tabloids. Mm -hmm. It doesn't appear that anyone aboard this train is her friend. Maybe she doesn't have any friends. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised. Maybe you can be too rich after all. Well, I'll catch you later. Okay. Take care. Oh. This looks like some sort of game. They need to make this harder, like change the tempo. Cause I, it's, yeah, they need to make this harder. I like the little people cheering in the crowd though. I did it. Wonder what's in here. Okay, okay. Let's play it. Don't do that, please. Those microphones I set up over there are very sensitive. I just about took out my eardrums. You can play that thing when I'm done. I'll let you know when that is, all right? Okay. Let's see the second chance. No, no, oh. no. No, no, no. Please don't. He won't let me. It's locked. Looks like Camille was teaching oh. herself how to play the piano. Thomasina O'Neill. Looks like some kind of sewing sampler. I wonder if there's a relationship between those symbols and those numbers. There's a duck in a square. Four and one. Hmm. Awful Ursula. There's also an owl and cherries. Um, owl is seven, cherries is ten. Hmm. This might become important later. And what the deal is with those weird looking bolts? A little book of samplers. Do I need to know this right now? Duck is marital fidelity. Um, they don't have a square. They don't have a square. A oh, square right there. Okay. Square is. Nature duck is marital fidelity. Owl is wisdom, of course. Cherries. This is oh, departed. Maybe Jake Hurley and Camille had marital fidelity, like they were very close and they liked nature and they liked traveling. But the owl and cherries, wisdom departed. That sounds like just stupid. <sighs> Are they calling Hello? it stupid? Nancy. Hi, it's me. Hi, Bess. And me. Hey, George, what's up? What's up? You're the one who's on the train with a bunch of famous people. You tell us. I do not like being unnecessarily called. Just calm down. Oh, I normally don't like calling people, and I avoid it at every chance I get. There are some games where you have to call people, but there are some games where you don't have to call anybody at all. How do you think the Hardy Boys are doing? Why do you think she hasn't called? 
What do you think Laurie Gerard is wearing? Oh, George, that is so not true. I don't even think this is important. So come on, Nancy. I don't care. On a train full of famous people bound for who knows where. So dish already, would you? Bess, calm down. Look what you did. You got paint in my hair. I'm sorry. Ah, <sighs> this is so annoying. Nice try, Bess. No, really. You're just saying that because you're afraid I'll bail and you'll wind up having to paint this dump all by yourself. George, I kid you not. You should seriously I'm so think bored. I'm doodling on a box. What color is it? Adobe beige. Nice try, Bess. What's going on, man? They called me it's unnecessarily. Know what happens. Those bitches. Wasting my time. Hey, Nancy, right? I was trying to look around. Why are you interrupting me? You've got a better memory than our hostess. <laughs> Who doesn't? Amateur detective, huh? Mm. Never thought about becoming a real detective? You know, like me? Nancy never could because she breaks too many laws and all the clues uh, or evidence she acquires, she acquires by Ill illegal means and it would be admissible in a court of law. So, I mean, you mean she can't. You mean police detective? No, I never have. It's a great job, you know. I love it. You, uh, heard about those bank robberies I solved, right? Yes, I sure did. Baffling case. Two-man team at 17 banks in three states in five days. FBI had no idea who the perps were. But after forcing their vehicle to a stop, confronting them, despite the fact that they were armed and giving chase, I single-handedly made the collar. Huh. <laughs> I heard all they had was a plastic knife from a carry-out chicken place. Calling you out, Tino. You heard wrong. You <laughs> see, Nancy, when somebody does something really remarkable in this country, the first thing everybody else does is try to tear them down. Reporters, late-night comedians, even some of my fellow officers, all have been spreading vicious lies about me. Mark, yeah, that would suck. They've never done anything remarkable in their sorry little lives, and they're jealous. Anyway, you should look around in here. Lots of interesting stuff. This was Jake's private car, you know. Where's the best that they would sleep on if uh, they lived on the train? I understand that you found something on the floor in the dining car. Yeah, at uh, first I thought it was an old coin, but it uh, turned out to be some kind of slug. When I first played this, I didn't know what a slug was, and I thought he meant, like, the actual little creature. <laughs> I was like, why would he put that in his pocket? That's gross. Do you think it had anything to do with Lori's disappearance? Nah. Probably been lying there for a hundred years. May have served a purpose back then, but now, worthless. May I see it? Sure. In fact, here, keep it. Wear it around your neck or something. That way, when people ask you where you got it, you can tell them Tino Balducci gave it to you. The Tino Balducci. You are so fucking oh, into yourself, you. dude. What else can I do for you? <laughs> so, what do you think happened to Lori? She could have been kidnapped, she could have been tossed off the train, she could be hiding from us. But I obviously won't know which until I've gathered all the facts. You are so cavalier for- oh, You are so cavalier for, like, thinking that she could have been kidnapped or could have been tossed off the train, like, if I thought that, I would be in so much of a panic and I would, like, scream at the- the engineer until he pulled over. But obviously, the engineer knows something we don't. When do you think that will be? I'll know the facts when I know the facts. The truth can't be rushed, you know. Have you had a chance to talk to Charlena Purcell? Now, why would I want to do a thing like that? What? You don't like her? I can't stand those sappy books she writes. So? And seeing as I said as much during an interview on national TV once, it's a pretty safe bet she doesn't like me. Okay, first off, 
This is the second person who has judged her over her career. Okay, you can judge some people over their careers, but like, mm, depending on what it is. Like, if it's like an illegal career, maybe. Um, but like, she's making a living for herself and she has a fan base. Even though you're not part of that fan base, you should respect what she's doing, dude. Have you talked to John Gray? <laughs> the ghost guy? Total quack. Only reason I'd talk to him would be to arrest him for fraud. Okay, but I do believe that. I do believe that. <laughs> Thanks for your help. Not a problem. Hmm. Wonder what Jake used this for. Another gemstone. Hmm. Okay. Obviously, there's going to be stuff about gemstones later. Looks like an old fashioned cigar box. Wonder why it's locked. Huh. Oh no. There was one time when I was younger. I'm not sure if it was this game or another game, because I'm pretty sure there's another game with a periodic table. Anyway, um, <laughs> my father's a retired chemistry teacher. So I would just ask him what the symbols meant instead of looking it up. And he kept telling me, you know, and then I went in there and I asked about PB. <laughs> My mom was like, peanut butter. And we were both just like, what? We're talking about the periodic table. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> oh. Camille with Hagar Anderson and Chantilly Hildegard. I don't know how to pronounce your names. Dude, she was a creepy doll collector. That's what she was. Hager Anderson and Chantilly Hildegard. It's talking about the dolls a lot. I wonder if I should be keeping track of them. Hold on. Okay. Um J H for Jake Hurley, obviously. Must be Jake's insignia. Eliza Sandberger. Received of Jake Hurley for the price of three dollars and seventy-three cents. One Krollmeister, one Krollmeister doll with decorative red ribbon. Oh, you know what? I need to go back to that um, poem, that poem. Because uh, I think it said doll's tale. Oh, and there's something in here. Hold on. Oh. Awful Ursula. Okay. Um, wasn't there? Ill-tempered Edna or Edna the Terrible. Um. Okay.
Let's Better do not it. Mess with that puppy. Let's do it. Oof. Oh god. Oh god, that would hurt so bad. Oh yeah, let's not do that again. Oof. Oh. Okay, this seems simple enough. Hmm. Oh. I don't know if this goes here and this goes here. No? Ah, uh, you know what? This goes here. And that goes there. Right? Okay, so those three are right. Um... Those two. Okay, so now we just need to get the corners. Whoops. That looks right. I don't think that's right. Oh, that's not right either, actually. That's right. I... That might... That might be right. Let's switch these two and see what happens. Hmm, no. I think that that... Maybe... No, that's not right. Whoops. That's not right either. Maybe this isn't right? Oh, that looks right. This must go over here. What is not right? Sweet. Pickaxe and lamp with Buell for safekeeping. To open what's closed, lead is the key. Or is it lead is the key? Okay, I get to keep that? Sweet. Hmm. Hmm. More questions? The others on the train, John Gray and that police detective, do you know them very well? I don't know them at all. Needless to say, I don't watch television, so I've never even seen Mr. Gray before. Although I do know that his profession, if you can call it that, is rife with crackpots. Well, yeah, As for I Mr. agree. Gattucci, from what I've read, his success in solving those robberies was less a matter of talent and more a matter of being in the right place at precisely the right time. In other words, you don't think he deserves all the attention he's getting? No. You and those two Boy Scouts you're with would make better detectives. Thank you. I should get going. I think that so. Would be nice. Have y'all found you anything? Got? Of course you so haven't you found see? anything else. You know y'all been sitting us. on your asses. Okay. I I don't think we actually passed Balducci's car. Yeah, I think we turned around before then. An old scale. Strange. It seems to be built into the wall. It's locked. It's a stupid wall. Those symbols look like the ones I saw in that sampler. Square and that duck look very familiar. Okay, so I eventually need to get them. But right now I've unlocked this door. Maybe that's for the pickaxe. Um Yes. Okay, that's all in that drawer. What do 
all those colors have to do with silver? Okay. This thing, whatever it is, I'm going to need a spyglass, a pickaxe, and a lamp. Citrine, amethyst, zircon, those are all gemstones, I think. Hmm. Okay. Could be so upset about something that befell a doll. I accidentally knocked one Camille calls naughty teen off the shelf and literally I'm afraid fractured tiny skull. Oh shit. Naughty Tina is a crackhead. Heard. Okay, you know what? I know we still need to explore this room, but I think I'm going to save it for next time. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to save this for next time. Thank you so much. Come along with me next time. Bye.